In the past, I've done an entire series on dialogue trees using behavior trees. And I want to redo all of that, but instead we're going to be working with state trees. So you can see we have dialogue progression, we have dialogue choices, which have different parts to them, and so on and so forth. This all runs off of a state tree system. You don't need to have seen the previous behavior tree version of this to keep up with this at all. You will need to know the basics of state trees. Obviously, I do have an entire series on that if you need to get caught up on state trees in general. But this is what we're going to be making, and there's going to be a couple of videos back to back about this. So let's start here with an entirely empty project. Every one of these episodes, as usual, is going to have its own project download as well as a series completed project download for patrons and YouTube members down below in the description. But let's get started on setting up the actual like dialogue display box because I think that is going to be the cornerstone and it's going to be the most important thing that we set up early on. So we go into user interface, we make a widget blueprint, will be a user widget and we'll call that WBP dialog box. I'm going to set this up fairly quickly as a piece of UI design. So we'll start this off by adding in a vertical box. I'm going to set this to uh, desired. That's just a previewing thing that doesn't actually impact any of the performance, but that'll let me see what this thing actually looks like. We're going to put a size box into that, which is going to hold a border inside of it. And inside of that border, we're going to be putting a text. And this is going to be the text that's going to display the name. So this size box is going to be relatively small. If we come over here, we set the width and height override to something reasonable, like maybe 150 in width, and then something like 20 in the height. Now we'll go into the text, uh, set the text color for now to black, and go into the font and just kind of make that smaller until it fits in there. So something like this. Then we can close the size box again and add another size box into the vertical box. So we're gonna have two size boxes on top of each other. In this one, we're going to put a horizontal box because we're gonna be putting a couple of things side by side. That being yet another size box and we're gonna be putting in a scroll box. The size box is going to contain an image. The scroll box is going to be containing the actual text. Just in case we need to be able to like put a lot of text in there, it will be scrollable. You should try to avoid that, but just in case you need it, it's nice to have. So let's put in an image into the size box and then select our size box. I'm going to set the width and height override both to 150. And then in the scroll box, we're going to add in the text that we're going to be working with. I want to come up back to the size box that's going to be holding our image and our text. And this one, I'm going to set the width override to about 1500, just so that we have a good context of how big this is. Now, there's going to be a couple of things that we need to patch up a little bit to make it uh, look slightly better. The first one is the first size box is set to fill horizontal and vertical. We're going to just outline that to the left and to the top. And I'm going to go into its padding and say that it has about 10 units of padding to the bottom. So that there's a little bit of distance between the name and the character portrait. Then for the scroll box, we're going to set this to fill the entire room that it has. And then going into the actual text, I'm going to set the padding to be about 10 units from all sides. So that it's not that snugly up against the edge. Now, if you want to, you can also still wrap this text within a uh, border or something like that. So wrap with a border and then make the border have that padding instead of the text. So we'll set the text uh, to zero, zero. Border will have the padding and we're going to set that to fill instead. Or we can get rid of the borders padding and give it back to the text if you prefer so that the text is a little bit inside of the border. Uh, I will also set the text color to black. And now we have some sort of text box. Maybe the border, we can set the brush color to like a little bit more of a gray and then the alpha to like 0.5. So that's kind of see-through. You can kind of style this however you want, right? We are just going to make this functional. Be creative with it in your own fancy ways. Importantly, in the text, we're going to look for wrap and we want to be able to auto wrap this text so that if we go into this text block and we copy this over a bunch of times, it will automatically wrap itself around. 
Now the rest of the issue that it makes the whole dialog box grow, which we don't want to do. So if we come up here into the size box again, we can set a height override to force it to be a certain height. In which case, I'm going to go with 150 because we made the character a portrait 150 by 150. And now you can see it has turned into a scroll box. Which again, generally you want to probably uh, just prevent too much text at once from showing up on screen, but it's a good fail safe. Now, some of these parts are going to need to be variables, because we're going to be setting them and changing them, obviously. So we want to set this text to being variable. We want to set the text for the name that we have here to being the variable. So we're going to set the preview name to just name. Now we want to set the image to being variable as well. And let's compile that. So now we have this first setup done. What we're going to do now is we're going to go back into our project and we're going to go for blueprint and we're going to make a structure and this will be our dialogue structure. This is going to contain everything that every piece of individual dialogue will contain. So something like a texture 2D for the character portrait that we had. So we have a texture 2D uh, for that. I'll call that something like face. We'll add a variable for the name which is going to be a text variable and we'll add a variable for the actual text, obviously, that's what this is going to be, which is also going to be a text variable. The reason we're using text here is because texts work with translation tables, so if you want to translate your game down the line, you can just provide in a translation table and everything should work, which also really does help with like the whole scroll box thing, because in a different language, some lines might end up being longer than others, and they don't really fit anymore. The scroll box will just take care of that for you, again, as a fail safe. And then I also want to add in like a sound, which will be of type sound bass. This lets you add in dialogue clips, essentially. Unreal has its own built-in dialogue system that is kind of unfinished in a lot of ways, which you could use here. I prefer to just put in sound clips and do all that stuff. Uh, myself within this dialogue system instead. Now if you need anything else to be in here, like a certain type of text color, or maybe a specific type of font, or whatever you want, you just add that into this dialogue structure that we're going to be using. So now we can use this whatever we want in our project. So let's go into our event graph on our dialogue box, where we'll make a new custom event, and we'll call that set new dialogue. Set new dialogue is going to have one input, so if we go into the inputs, we can make one right here. And this will be the new dialogue. And that's going to be of type dialogue, the structure that we just made. So this one. As you can see, Unreal has a couple of things to do with uh, its own dialogue system. Again, we're going to be ignoring that entirely for now. We're just going to set up our own custom implementation for everything. So from there, uh, we pull it out and we break it up into its individual parts. And we'll just go, hey, image, we'll get a reference to that. And we'll set brush from texture. And we'll just check, hey, is this face valid or not? Because if it is valid, we want to set it to that new face. If it is not valid, we're just going to skip this. That'll allow us to make a dialogue structure without a face in it to just tell the system, hey, keep whatever face you're displaying right now. Because otherwise it's going to be really annoying for every single line that you put in, having to put in the same face. If a character is speaking for like 10, 20 lines at a time, having to re-pick the same face over and over and over again is just kind of tedious. So this way you only have to do it for the first line of any given character, and after that you can just kind of leave it empty. Then we need to actually name these text blocks properly, because I have no idea which one is which. Uh, so let's go back into the name and call this one name. And then this one can just be uh, text. So now in the variables here, we can get our name and set the text on set text. You can also do it directly on the variable. I like using the function just because. And we're going to be setting that to the value of whatever name we got put in. And then we'll do the same thing with the text. So we do the text variable and then we just hook up the text to that new text that we're supposed to be setting. Now the sound we can pull off and just spawn sound 2D. And this is going to give us a return value and we'll save that as a variable and we'll call that something like uh, last sound. The reason that we do that is because every time we spawn a new sound, it makes a new sound component or an audio component as it's called, which will let us stop that sound 
as well. Because if you're going to be mashing through this dialogue, uh, every time you move on to the next line of dialogue, you want the current line of dialogue's audio to stop, otherwise they're going to be overlapping. So I guess at the start of this set new dialogue, what we should do is we should get our last dialogue. We can change that to a validated cat. And if it is not valid, we can just move on. But if it is valid, we can stop this audio and then hook that up into the flow as well. So now we have our set new dialogue thing working, mostly. There's quite a lot of setup going on in this project before we actually get to like that fun and juicy part. But as the setup is done, everything after this will become a lot easier to deal with because we're essentially just going to be calling this function about a billion times. So setting this up properly from the start is pretty important. Now that we have a dialog box that works properly, uh, let's make a new user widget again. So blueprint widgets. And we'll call this something like WBP dialog display or something maybe a little bit easier to differentiate between. Uh, that's gonna have a canvas panel and then we're going to put in a vertical box for this one as well. Inside of that vertical box, we're going to be putting in our dialog box. The reason we're doing this in the vertical box is mostly for future proofing reasons because we're gonna be adding things like choice buttons and skipping to the next dialog bit in future videos. For now, we're only going to be using the dialog box. But we're going to be dynamically adding other elements to this in the future. Now, we just set this up to be whatever uh, size we want it to be. And then we kind of set up the anchors for it so that it scales properly with our screen as well. So for the time being, we're going to go into the event graph here and just make a temporary custom event. We're going to be replacing some of this code later on, but I just want this to function for now. So let's say uh, test dialog and that's going to take our dialog box it's going to use that set new dialog we're going to take in the parameter for our new dialog and just pass it through and for now this is all that that actually needs to do so let's set up our state tree at least the beginning of our state tree shall we so for that, make sure that you go into plugins and you look for state tree and you find the gameplay state tree plugin and make sure to enable it. You might need to restart your engine. New state tree and you should be able to add one with a normal state tree component over here. So let's call this uh, ST test for state tree test. Open it up and that opens up our normal state tree view. So we'll go here and make a new task immediately, call it stt run single dialog or something along those lines. And that's going to have a variable for the dialog display, which is of course going to be our dialog display widget that we made. So we have our WPP dialog display object reference, and we're going to make this a category input so that we're forced to provide this in, because this is obviously a fairly important one. So when we enter this state, we get our dialog display and we test dialog. That dialog that we're going to be putting in will just uh, promote to a variable. So do that and expose it. And that is all that we have to do there for now. So if we go into our state tree and we add a new child state here, we'll call that test dialog we set up a task for that with our new stt run single dialog and our dialog will just be hey we want to use this face it's going to be called uh facey mac face face and its text is going to be i have a face and then we pick some sort of sound ideally you would have like a voice acted <laughs> clip here of course uh we're just gonna go for like I don't know, explosion. Sounds pretty good. Now, the state tree, if we try to compile it, it's going to complain to us because we need to provide in a value for our dialog display. But how are we going to get a dialog display? Well, for that, we're also going to be making a new task again. So we make a new state tree blueprint task and we'll call that stt for state tree task and we'll call that create dialog display. Here on enter state, we're going to be creating a widget. And that is going to be a widget of type dialog display. And we'll simply promote that to a variable and call that display. 
and make that of category outputs. Now, when this state tree finishes, so when we exit this state, because it's going to be on the root, so we're never going to exit it until the state tree as a whole is finished, we will also take this display and remove from parent, so that it removes it from the screen. And we need to add it to the screen as well. So after we make the variable, we also add it to the viewport. And this will now take care of adding it as soon as the state tree starts and removing it as soon as the state tree is finished. Only thing we need to do is add that task to our root. So we add a task again, create dialog display. And because any of the child states of this root can access any of its outputs, we can now go into our test dialog and say, hey, our dialog display is going to be the stt create dialog display display. The only annoying part about this is that you do have to do this for every single state in your state tree that's going to like run the dialog. But you can just copy paste it over with shift right click and shift left click. So it shouldn't be that big a deal. Now if I try to compile, it'll work properly. Let's make a quick test actor. Um, I'm going to make a blueprint class, just a normal actor bp speaker. Just going to add a quick little cube so that we can see where it is in the world. Also, there seems to be no details panel. There we go. And then we add a state tree component, a normal one, not an AI one, in which we give in the state tree. So this will just run on begin play now. We'll work on manually triggering this a little bit later. For now, I just want to see, hey, if we run this state tree, it should add the dialog to the screen with the settings that we give in here. So let's give that a shot. As you can see, it does it with the sound as well, which kind of caught me off guard, kind of scared me, honestly. It got a facey Mac face face that says I have a face. So the basic setup works. Now we can start using that to actually build out some more complex dialogue with more than just one line. But for now, I do think it is probably a good place to end off this first introductory video. And uh, next time we'll start working on having multiple lines that we can easily write and then play one after the next, after the next, after the next. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And of course, an extra massive thank you to my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, and my Cave Student tier supporters, Oiku and Earl Monsville Erno.